What's going on, Goat Format Duelists? We are starting a new series here on Goat Duels in which we will break down some of the top deck lists from the past month of Goat Format tournaments. So today, I'm going to be showing you four deck lists that made a splash in the tournaments of March 2023. Now, these are a mix of both new creations as well as some tried-and-true archetypes from Goat Format. But my hope here is that you'll be able to walk away with some new ideas and solid options that will make you more prepared for when you enter your next GOAT format tournament. Welcome to GOAT Duels, I'm ACP. Now let's jump right out of the gate with an absolutely crazy concoction here. It's a Rescue Cat deck, but this looks nothing like what I've ever seen before. This deck was piloted to a first place finish by Danji Boss. And um, as usual, you know, if I get anyone's name wrong, I, I apologize for the mispronunciation. This dude took this deck to a six and two record sixth place finish did pretty well and you know i've tried out rescue cat a decent amount myself experimented with a lot of different builds but this is really a new direction entirely um to start i'd say the main thing that makes this unique is you've got three gigantes and two copies of even the rock spirit arguably just a strictly worse uh gigantes but you know, here we are. Rescue Cat, of course, a lot of the monsters that you want to play anyways, they are Earth, right? Milus Radiant, Panda, Death Wombat, Injection Fairy Lily, these guys are all Earth anyways. So this dude just figured like, hey, why not? I'm just going to lean into the Earth theme, play the Gigantes, which is admittedly, I think, a pretty strong card. I mean, 1900 attack, 1300 defense special summon, already pretty good before you even start talking about its effect, which can potentially give you that heavy storm. And I also want to point out how good United We Stand becomes in this deck, right? I'd say 99% of the time you're activating United We Stand, you've got five monsters in play. That's basically a spell card that gives you an extra 4,000 points of power, right? Because if you go Rescue Cat, Last Will, that's four monsters. Special Summon, one of these guys, that's five. And some of the choices are standard, of course. You got the three Last Wills, the three Giant Trunades. We know how that goes. But, you know, also, most of these Rescue Cat decks do play Ojama Trio to power up the Panda. This deck is not playing any Ojama Trios and only two Gyre Pandas, which you really don't see a lot. Two Death Wombat. Still got the three Milus Radiant, though, to boost all our Earth monsters. So, you know, I think sometimes you could potentially even... OTK your opponent without summoning Rescue Cat, right? If you just got a bunch of Earths in your grave, maybe summon a Milus Radiant, special summon some, uh, you know, Gigantes here. They all have got, what, 2,400 attack? The Rock Spirit's gonna have 2,200? I mean, that's pretty beefy. If you manage to get Goblin in play with the Milus Radiant, all, all the Goblins have 2,800 attack. I mean, that's, that's pretty strong. The Lily gets pumped by 500. One thing I want to point out, you know, something that I think we, you might have been expecting even less, is we've got three Goblin Attack Force in play. And why are we doing that? Um, I, I think there's a couple of things that make this interesting. 2300 attack, of course, is a lot. That's pretty much enough to beat over any of the commonly played monsters in GOAT format. So even Chaos Sorcerer, if the Sorcerer is in defense, you can just kill it straight up. If it's in attack mode, you can attack into it and trade guys, which isn't too bad. And if your opponent just doesn't have a monster in play, you know, maybe you even use mind control on their monster to clear it out of the way. Boom, just summon a goblin attack force, hit them for 2300. Yeah, your goblin attack force is going to get run over next turn, but that's not bad. In a way, this deck is kind of playing goblin attack force as its substitute for something like Just Desserts or Desk Koala. It fills a lot of the same role, but it has some advantages too. And one of those advantages is that we get to play Reinforcement of the Army. And Reinforcement of the Army is actually a very strong card in a Rescue Cat deck. It's a card that I've experimented with before a little bit, trying to fit in like one copy. But this guy just said, no, I'm actually just going to play two copies. I'm going to play the Exiled, the three Goblin Attack Force. We got two Rotas with four copies. That's good enough. And why you want to play Reinforce from the Army in this deck is because it gets Exiled Force. And Exiled Force is a really strong card. Um, because if you have, say you have something like two Last Wills in your hand, 
you really want to draw that exiled force, right? So you can go exiled, pop their guy, will, will, get two cats, attack them for game. That's what you're trying to do with this deck. So basically having three copies of exiled force in a rescue cat deck instead of one is a huge upgrade. So that's really the reason I think that we're playing the goblin here is we just want to hit our opponent for some damage and allow ourselves to play two reinforcements in the army. So other than that, not a ton to talk about. Um, cool deck. I will say Cyberstein from the side, I think you could consider mating it as a really strong last will target. That's often what I like to do. But if you're not mating it, you definitely have to side it because it's a nice searchable side deck card for those combo decks like Reasoning Gate in particular. So yeah, sweet deck, and I uh, wish all you Rescue Cat players the best of luck going forward. Next up, we've got a first place Warrior deck list from Lucas the Heretic. Now, Warriors are no stranger to the top cut of GOAT format tournaments, and neither is Lucas. But there is actually a lot that we can learn from this deck. Now, I will say, if you're preparing for the meta, this monster lineup and this spell lineup here are 100% standard. We've got no tech cards really, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that you can look at and go, huh, that's unusual. You do see Warriors playing these 14 monsters. We've got the three Blade Knights, one of all the other Warriors, and then the three Kaikus with the Tribe and the Breaker. That is pretty much just standard. And then spells, same thing. The spells are pretty much all just kind of staples slash good cards, right? No, no tech cards, no Book of Moons, anything like that. So we've got the 14 monsters, the 11 spells, and then the 15 traps. That's a pretty common ratio for warrior decks. But when we get to the traps, that's where things start to get interesting. And if you're playing a warrior deck, that is the bit where you can kind of make the deck your own and, and customize it to a large extent. So Lucas here chose to play three copies of Chop Deshu. Now that is not standard, but it's definitely fine. You see it, it's just not the most common choice is all. Um, I like two myself, that's just kind of what's worked best for me in my experience, but you definitely can't fault someone for playing three, especially in this meta where chaos is just everywhere. And Trap Dust Shoot is a really good card against Chaos. That is why Dust Shoot has gotten so popular. You see so many decks playing Dust Shoot. It is more popular now than it has ever been in GOAT Format's history. And it's really all because of Chaos. So um, Dust Shoot, three of them, good choice in this meta. You know, got some other standard choices. We got the Mirror Trench of the Ring, the three Solemns, two Sakus. But what we need to talk about is Zig Zen Hu. Now this might just seem like a preference card or something, but it's actually a very interesting choice, and this card is kind of more complicated and more tricky than people think. Now, Zig Zen Hu, you activate it by targeting two spells, on, two spells of traps on the field, as you can see here, and then those cards can't be activated. So, if your opponent only has one set spell or trap, you can't use it just on that one set spell or trap. You would have to use it on one of theirs and one of yours which would be a minus one normally. However, what you can do is, in that scenario, you can target your opponent's card and target your card and then chain the card that you're targeting. So in this case, that actually works with Jar Greed, which is also not like a super standard warrior choice, but again, it's it's fine. Um, so yeah, you can have a Jar Greed set, you can use Zing Zen Hu, target your set Jar Greed, and then your opponent's uh, lonely back row, and chain your Jar Greed, their card will still be locked down. And you can do the same thing with Call the Haunted or Ring, right? Activate Zing Zen Hu, target your set call, target your opponent's Speller Chop, chain your call, chain your ring. That all works. However, like, what's interesting about this choice really is it's kind of, it's kind of a mind game. I could see, like, a little cycle happening. So here's the thing. Before, you know, if you look at, like, a standard warrior list, if we just cut these Zing Zen Hus for two Dust Tornadoes, this deck list would be, like, almost entirely standard. Um, and I would say that, you know, most warrior deck lists play at least one Dust Tornado. I'd say two is the most common number. Sometimes you see one, sometimes you see three. But you normally see um, those Dust Tornadoes. So in the standard warrior list, you're playing one MST, two Dust Tornado. What the opponent is often going to do is they are going to strategically set multiple back rows, hoping that you hit the wrong one with Dust Tornado. So I'll give you a pretty common example, actually. Say it's game one, you know, the game's played out a few turns, you know you're up against warriors, and you have a mirror force and a nobleman across out in your hand, 
versus your opponent's one set back row. What a good player is normally going to do there is they're going to set the mirror force and they're going to set the nobleman to cross out because the cross out is going to be a dead card anyways. So if you can get that cross out hit by the dust tornado and have your mirror force dodge that dust tornado, that is like a really strong play. And in addition, you have a lot of decks right now that are pretty back row heavy. Like the typical chaos deck is probably playing anywhere from like eight to 10 traps. And a lot of those traps are either things that are chainable, like Jar Greed, or something that protects your back row, like Solb Judgment. So it's not too uncommon to see a Chaos deck go set Wing Blast, set Jar Greed, or set Solemn, set Raigeki Break, or even set Solemn, set Raigeki Break, set Mirror Force. And versus those kinds of common plays where you're setting multiple back rows to play around Dust Tornado, Zing Zen Hu is really good because you just go, oh, in your end phase, Boom, I'm going to get both of them. I'm going to get your Mirror Force and your Cross Out. I'm going to get your Jar Greed and your Wing Blast. I'm going to get your Solemn and your Raigeki Break, or whatever it is. So, like, especially in Game 1, but post-side as well, you can get people so good with the Zing Zen Hu. You know, e even your average Chaos player, you're going to get them good. Now, there are downsides. Uh, Zing Zen Hu isn't so great against the players that are just going, oh, I'm just going to activate Royal Decree or something, because normally if your opponent flips up Royal Decree, you can chain Dust Tornado, kill their Decree in response. Zing Zen Hu, you can't really do that. Um, if they, of course, set something like Decree plus Scapegoat, you can end phase Zing Zen Hu, lock them both down. That's great. Um, but Zing Zen Hu also happens to be pretty strong in the mirror, and you have seen Warrior decks in the past siding maybe one or two copies just because it's really good in the mirror. Just because you're both setting tons of acros. And the view was, well, it's an easy 2 for 1 in the mirror. But I think what Lucas came to figure out is like, yeah, it's an easy 2 for 1 in the mirror. But it's also a pretty easy 2 for 1 against Chaos. And those are the two most popular decks. So why not just main deck this? I mean, I haven't tested it myself, but I'm on board with the logic. You know, I think it was a smart choice. I think it's a choice that we're going to see in the future. And again, I think it'll create mind games where you have to wonder now, like, oh, should I set one back row and play around the Zing Zen Hu? Or do I set two back rows and play around the Dust Tornado? You might even see some warrior deck lists play like one of each, one Dust, one Zing Zen Hu. And really, um, you know, sort of make your opponent think hard about how they're setting their back rows. I mean, that's... It, it's a really cool tactic. I love stuff like that in GOAT format. I'm all about the mind games. That's why I play this format. So I thought that was really cool. And if you're trying to stay on top of the meta, this is definitely a card that you need to be aware of. I want to talk briefly about the side. Um, mostly it's pretty standard. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about here. Yeah, okay, we got the two Saku's main, the third Saku and the widespread coming in for mirrors and earth aggro and that sort of thing. Pretty standard. Oh, we got the Dust Tornado on the side, yeah, just in case, I guess. I will point out, though, that this list is siding heavily for the mirror. Um, I would be willing to say that between the main with the Zing Zen Hu and this side deck, I bet Lucas was crushing mirrors. So one combo that we like is Mobius Brain Control. I've talked about this before. Brain Control is really good against Warrior decks. Mobius can be pretty good against Warrior decks, although it kind of depends on the situation but they both get better together. So you have these two cards that are individually strong against warriors, but have synergy together. And, and that's something that I like. Also for the mirror, we've got some Bray of the Dark. We're siding it because it's a Rota target, right? We want to make our uh, Rota toolbox a little stronger post side. But we've also got three Gravekeeper Spies. You know, Brain Control is good with Mobius. You know, it's also pretty good with Mobius. Spy, give yourself some Tribute Fodder. Give yourself those walls. Spy, of course, also pretty good in the mirror. Good in game one or game two. Now, you actually do see some warrior decks even main decking two spies. It's it's a non-standard choice, but it is a thing that people do. I think that can have his merits as well. Lucas chose to side it. Um, Gravekeeper Spy is, in general, arguably one of the strongest monsters in GOAT format. So I don't blame someone for saying, hey, look, if I'm not going to main this card, I better at least be siding it. So, yeah, we've got... How many cards is this guy going to bring in for the mirror? Three Spies, probably two Mobius, a Zombriath. That's already six. Brain Control is seven. And I would probably guess Dust, 
Saku and Widespread are coming in as well. Yeah, we're looking at probably citing in 10 cards from the mirror. That's a lot. Uh, it might even be a bit too many. I don't know if we need 10, but guarantee this guy's crushing mirrors, that's for sure. Third up, we've got a first place deck list from Zoogler, and this deck is Chaos Return, and I am happy to be seeing someone taking up the mantle of Chaos Return other than just Dingo Sig. I think Chaos Return is really good, it's really slept on, it's strong against the meta, it is the Chaos deck that beats other Chaos decks. It, it really is. And that is why I think people need to pay attention to this deck. It's a good deck. Now, this list, it's a little different than the one that me and Dingo Sig play, but it's it's still pretty good nonetheless. You know, there's some stuff I don't like. I, I wish we could have some Zaborgs in here. I am a Zaborg enjoyer, as many of you know. Zoogler apparently is not a Zaborg enjoyer, nor is he a Shining Angel enjoyer, which I guess I can't blame him for. Shining Angel isn't that good. But he went with uh, the Thunder Dragons instead. Now, although this isn't necessarily the exact way I would play the deck, there are some things that I like about it. There are some advantages. There are some things worth talking about. One thing that I like is that this deck actually disguises what it's doing pretty well. Because if you were to take out the two returns from this deck, right? Imagine you just didn't have the returns in here. It would be hard to know what you're doing, right? If these are just two invisible cards, you're like, huh, I don't know what those two cards are. They would just, this would just look like a standard Chaos deck, right? You got your Thunder Dragons, you got your Dakochis, your Spies, your Sorcerer, your Igeki Break, your Solemns, your Dust Shoots. Just looks like totally normal Chaos deck. Nothing to see here, guys. So... Now, there's some cards that can give it away. Bazoo kind of gives it away. Obviously, if, I don't know, say your opponent activates Delinquent Duo, hits a return out of your hand. Okay, well, that also gives it away. But other than really those three cards, the one Bazoo and the two returns, nothing gives away what this deck is doing. Because even a card like Blade Knight, eh, it could just be a tech card, right? Could just be a Chaos deck throwing in one Blade Knight there. I've seen it before. Um, same with Kaiko's Skilled Dark Magician. Same with DD Warrior Lady. So what I kind of like about this list is that you can kind of play it like a normal Chaos deck, right? Especially in Mirrors. You go back and forth. You trade some cards. You cross out each other's things. You know, you sorcerer their guy. They sorcerer your guy. And then mid-game, late game, you're like, boom, return. Got you. And if they've got, I don't know, the Mirror Force, you're like, oh, I've got the Solemn for that, by the way. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, again, I, I think there's some advantages to Shining Angel. I like that it can search DD Warrior Lady. I like that post side, you can get the Jaugen or the Roulette Barrel, which I think are a little underrated. But uh, this list is good too. I think you could even swap this Bazoo out for the second Sorcerer, disguise the strategy even a little more. Um, I also don't know why we're playing two Kaiku, one Skill Deck Magician. That seems like a very strange thing to do. Why not just throw this third Kaiku in the main over the skill dark. I don't know. Uh, one thing that I like about Kaiku, though, is, well, it's good against the other Chaos decks for one thing, but what you could do is you could play your Kaiku, hope your opponent snatch steals it, and then they go, oh, man, I'm going to get this guy so good. I'm going to snatch his Kaiku, banish his whole grave. How's he going to beat me? Then you go, well, return. That's how I'm going to beat you. So that's kind of nice. In a normal chaos deck that is a risk with playing Kaiku is that someone could snatch steal it and use it against you. But here, that's not something we're concerned about. So yeah, I think Chaos Return is still slept on. It's still underexplored. And no matter how you play it, whether you're playing Zaborg or Shining Angel or Thunder Dragon, whatever it is, just the basic principle of three Dakochi, three Spy, two Crossout, two Return, it's a good engine. It really is. It's good in this meta. Yeah, this deck is a little underpowered. Are you going to do the whole thing where you're activating a bunch of Trinity pieces and getting them back with your Magician of Faith? Well, no, we're not going to do that because there's no Magician of Faith here. So yeah, it's in a sense, it's a little underpowered compared to the nutted draws that some Chaos decks might have. And because of that, it can be a little tricky to play sometimes. But if you're good at playing this deck... You know, you use things like Kaiku and Blade Knight to your advantage. Use the Borg to your advantage if, if you play it. Use Return. I mean, even in this deck, Bazoo can be pretty strong, right? I mean, if you just pump it twice, that can run over a Sork in defense, 
pump it three times, it can even run over a Sork and attack. So Bazoo actually, I think, kind of has potential in the mirror. It's actually a pretty strong card in my opinion. You know, if, if you've been struggling at winning Chaos Mirrors, if you think grinding the Chaos Mirrors isn't your thing, try this instead. Give yourself that advantage. We got lots of great cards for the Chaos decks. We got the two Kaikus. We've got the two Returns. And even the two Dust Shoots. You do see a lot of Chaos decks mating those two Dust Shoots for the Mirror. I like it even more in this kind of deck, though, because you could kind of use it to see if the coast is clear before you use your return. I like that. In any sort of, like, combo control style deck, I like using Dust Shoot as a way to see if the coast is clear before you play that power card and attack your opponent for game. So yeah, give, give this deck a shot, uh, and congrats to Zoogler. I hope to see some more return players taking up the mantle soon. Don't be scared, guys. Last but not least, we have this first place Chaos deck list from Anthony Alvarado. It was a team event, so he did have some help, but first place is still first place. This is a great deck. I actually wanted to showcase this deck because unlike the others that were a little more teched out, this deck is actually super standard. So if you want to get a sense for what the most popular deck is right now, it would be something like this. It's going to be only a, a couple of cards off from this. And that's good to know if you're trying to counter the meta. It's also good to know because maybe you want to play something like this. Maybe you say, hey, look, I think I can crush everyone in mirrors. Just give me a super standard chaos deck list and I'm going to pilot that. Works for Anthony Alvarado. Could work for you too. So the 20 monsters here are super, super standard. You know, you saw people go back and forth between some choices. Oh, do I play two faith? Do I play three? Two kind of became standard. Do I play three Dakochu or do I play two? Two became standard. Do I play Tsukiyomi? The answer is, yeah, it's pretty good as a one of. You get some value with your flips. Deal with some problematic cards like Kaiku or Blade Knight. Do I play Tribe? The answer is, yeah, you clear a bunch of spies, clear a bunch of warriors, clear a bunch of goats. Discard that Thunder Dragon. Not too much of a discard that you're worried about. And three Chaos Monsters. Also quite standard. Spells here. Also very standard. Now, Book of Moon is one of those cards where I think players feel differently about it. You do see some cast X Plague, no Book of Moon. It used to be the case that two is kind of standard. You don't really see two anymore. One is kind of in the middle, I think. Um, two is probably too many. Zero, maybe not enough. Lake Tsukiyomi, you can get some value with your flips. I mean, you want to protect your BLS from Snatch Steel, don't you? You know, that that's, that's still a thing. So yeah, Book not nearly as strong as it used to be, but... Decent card to play. One of two upstarts. Talked about as poor. You don't have to play two upstarts. In fact, his teammate Slash Tap did not play any upstarts. Did just as well. But the two upstart, definitely standard. Does help you power into those Trinity pieces faster. And card destruction. Card destruction, I'll say, that is a card that you don't have to play. And in fact, the more standard choice right now might even be to not play card destruction. Just because of how common the mirror is. Card destruction, not super good when you're helping your opponent discard their Knight of Sailors and Thunder Dragons as well, but it is definitely a very powerful card against everything else, so why not play it? And kind of like the Warrior deck, the Traps is where you get to make this deck your own. Now, there's a lot of different numbers that people play with. Here we've got one Dust Shoot. You see some lists playing two. Here we've got two Wing Blasts. You see some decks, maybe they're playing three. Or maybe they're playing Regeki Break instead. Here we've got two Solemns. You could play one, you could play three, you could play zero. Solemn is really the one card where I think cast players are kind of all over the map. It just depends on who you ask, what their experience has been. I think two is fine. I don't know if I want to play three in this deck. I will see with Solemn, this is one of those cards where if you're a good player, you're going to get much better mileage out of Solemn than if you're a bad player. Now that, of course, is true of any card, arguably, but I think it's more true with Solemn. I think everything in the main is very standard. I like this side, actually. I, um, I, I don't see anything in the side that I can criticize. I, I like the three sides of Zombrea the Darks. We recently had a short about why Zombrea is really good against Warriors. One of the reasons that people forget being good against Snatch Deal. If they snatch it, they can't attack you directly. And with the control deck, you definitely care about that. Mind control, good mirrors, as always. Got the Azura, just in case we need that 6th light. You know, just in case we go up against goat control, want to clear some goats. Berserk Gorilla, just a worse Zombre of the Dark. He thought, you know, 3 wasn't good enough. He needed 
a fourth card of the same role. I also like Cyberstein. Great against combo decks. Dust, Sakus, pretty flexible. Mystic Walk, good against Burn. You could go with Hysteric Fairy instead. That's another option. Or you could just go with uh, the Mobius Brain Control combo that we saw. Mobius, good against Burn. And then Brain Control and Mobius, good against Warriors. That's another option. But here again, we see a lot of side deck cards against Warriors. The obvious ones being the Gorilla, the three Zumbreas, three Sakus. That's seven cards. It's a lot. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you liked this video, then maybe you should also watch this one here.